In this video, you'll be learning about this topic. Very cool. And Damien, I have to talk a little bit with you about your experience at Bridgewater Associates. So for those who don't know, Bridgewater is one of the largest hedge funds with over $160 billion in assets under management. And Ray Dalio, who you spoke about, is himself a, a billionaire worth somewhere around $16 billion, I think. Ray has also kind of pioneered this concept that the holy grail of investing is made up of about 15 uncorrelated investments, and uncorrelated being the key word. So this is obviously possible for someone maybe as big as Bridgewater, but how is that realistic for a retail investor to find 15 uncorrelated bets? It's probably not possible for a retail investor to find 15 uncorrelated bets, but there is the possibility to incorporate four or five uncorrelated return streams. You're just accessing liquid public markets in an inexpensive, efficient way. And that's essentially what risk parity is. So if you think about the traditional approach, 60-40 or some derivation of that, that is primarily invested in equity and equity-like risk. And so you have to check one number to figure out how you did day to day in your portfolio. Just look at what the stock market did. That's why when you turn on the CNBC, they talk about stocks primarily. That's all that anybody cares about because their portfolios are concentrated to that one thing. And the idea of the holy grail is finding a few things that are unrelated to each other and taking a much greater advantage of diversification. And it's, it's a simple concept, but in, in practice, very few people do it. So risk parity is our approach to implementing that with liquid public markets. And so essentially, if you think about the asset classes we use there, in addition to equities, we identify other assets that are reliably different than equities, but still have attractive returns on their own. And then to the degree that they come packaged up in a lower returning form, we actually make adjustments, which we can describe. But essentially, the other asset classes would be treasuries, would be inflation protected securities, different types of commodities, both commodity related equities, as well as gold. And all of those things are relatively lowly correlated to the stock market. So when you combine those things with stocks, you get something that's a lot more consistent than being concentrated in one thing. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next podcast episode and new investing resources. What are your takeaways and thoughts on this discussion? Let us know in the comments section below.